I am Vlacket's most loyal servant. She will not abandon me. Well, my day just improved. Did you want something? Huh. So, that's what people mean when they talk about butterflies in their stomach. Did you want something? Very serious of you, but go ahead. Always good when I'm with you. Whatever it takes.
stop pushing on. Hope this ends well. Mm.
pořád.
ages.
My faith will guide me. I must keep going. and blades always sharp. inside.
<laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. Originally, Shadowdale. Lately, the fanciest inns of Waterdeep. Meet Elminster Ormar, a good friend of mine, but rather more significantly, he's the most famed and respected wizard in the realms. Am I indeed? Most famed and respected errand boy, more like. I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you will begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get, get out with it. And a great kindness that would be. See, Gail, even in these barren parts, the art of hospitality begets inspired new works. If only one keeps up the practice. Oh, for the love of... Uh, this way, then? Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh. Nigh on 13 centuries old, and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow and see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. A wise choice. Better to indulge your curiosity than Elminster's appetite. Yes, what a delightful wedge of old Elthurion that was. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Elminster. Uh, right. Um, you see, I, um, um, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Thank you for that most considerate reminder. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't. Well, on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. 
She knows of your strife with the Absolute, that most insidious of evils. choose the instruments of their will with great precision. Sometimes the single drops we think we are do not realize what waves we are building up to be. Do not discount yourself, and by the same token, do not discount your enemy. You must know that the Absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece, and need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. My nahastra mistra real, Italian, thras anas It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. My honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the skies driven gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, an ocean born in lonely hours 
Come, ebb, come, flow, come, all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion. Be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. he wanted to make of me. As mistress chosen, he had no choice but to deliver her message. However much it pained him to do so, for Mistra to have sent him. The severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. Of course, we offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. If there was, I'm sure the goddess of magic and the greatest wizard who ever lived would have identified it. But alas, only one solution is offered. It remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Let's save such certainty for the moment such a decision is upon us. We may feel differently once we know what we're truly up against. Tell me, what can I do for you? She expects those who seek to use the weave to do so honestly and with respect for its potential to destroy as well as its potential to save. I doubt she's asked many of her followers to blow themselves up. That's a fate she's bequeathed exclusively to me. She wouldn't ask such a thing if it weren't our only means of survival. However much she's annoyed at me. doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. To take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have, and only I can wield it.
Oh, you know me, ever the optimist. I'm trying to focus on the positives. Truth is, I was living on borrowed time already. Consuming those items would only have kept the orb sated for so long. If anything, I feel more at peace than I have in months. At least now I know my death will have purpose. It won't be a distant bang in the footnotes of history. Ah, yes. Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavoured to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god. To know yourself, to be untouchable. To be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel. And with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realise what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral, the end of Carsus, and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more an event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. Loving them has its side effects as well. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus, not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her tried to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History. Repetition. It's the way things go. I can't believe Mistress demanding Gale sacrifice himself to destroy the Absolute. It's just a waste of a perfectly good cult that we could be controlling. And a waste of a perfectly good Gale, I suppose. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cosy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. You only have a matter of days to live. Don't dally, my friend. You wish to speak? A shame my first brush with the famed Elminster couldn't be a tad more optimistic. Listen, I might invoke the triad from time to time, appeal to Helm, but I'm no man of faith, not like Gale. I don't know what drives a man to consider his own death among countless others to be an appropriate exchange for his goddess's forgiveness. To me, it all sounds like nonsense. 
The faith that matters most is that which you hold in yourself, in the ones that most matter to you. Big Bomb be damned. Gale's got everything he needs to defeat the Absolute already. Talent, nerve, and powerful allies at his side. I hope he'll come to see that. It said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these horns on my head, curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck, not to mention a few bumps and prongs in unmentionable places. But I haven't seen my reflection just yet. Be my mirror. What do you see? It's because you know the heart lurking under the horns. The people will see a curiosity, maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters, keep them safe. And one day they will see the Blade of Frontiers again. A possibility that's kept me awake countless nights. But I don't have a clue where to start, other than play her games and play by the rules. That's the only language devils listen to. There could well be. She has the blighted thing. What I know of it is simply what has engraved itself upon my memory. My contract is very clear. I can bring Mazora no harm. She'll have to let me out of my pact willingly. The only way out is if I can out-bargain her. We're standing here with nothing but the clothes on our backs and the worms in our heads. We can, I'm sure of it. How glad I am that you see me as more than my patron's pet. At the ready. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or, mayhaps, a resurrection instead. Very well. Impossible. Thy party is full. Ah, <sighs> it doesn't ring a bell. But all right, must have had something important to say to Gail if he came all this way. Good news, I hope. now he's got a well I guess that would explain a little but Mistra <laughs> I mean this is a lot to take in what's he going to do Fuck. 
with me. There's devotion and then there's stupidity. If the god of magic can't handle this without sacrificing Gale, she's no god at all. <sighs> Poor Gale. He must be in bits after hearing that. <sighs> I'll distract him. Tell him I haven't read a book since secondary school. Watch his face melt off. Even the Githyanki have heard tell of the Sage of Shadowdale. Some of his works have been translated to Tirsu. That doesn't mean his every word carries wisdom, however. Near as I can tell, Mistra demands Gale's faith, but holds no faith in him. Why else would she demand Gale sacrifice himself, and perhaps so many others? Does she not think he can destroy the Absolute with his own immense talents? Does she not know the mighty company that he keeps? Demanding Vlakith may be, but she acts for the good of the Githyanki people. Mistra is concerned only for herself. Bah. Perhaps he'd find forgiveness in a fiery death. But I can't help but wonder why he'd want it at all. You can survive without me. As you say, do not keep me waiting. I can't believe Mistra actually expects Gale to just sacrifice himself like that. Seems like a waste of a fine mind. Soldier. Fuck yes. <laughs> 